Goal-oriented action planning is a popular framework that allows designers to set up goals, actions, and sensors that let the AI plan how do they achieve these different goals. In this video, we're gonna look at all of these things and talk about what are they, what do you do in each one of these, and how do they relate to one another when you're implementing your AI with Go. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you. Who, me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dream become reality by helping you understand complex AI behavior frameworks. I thought it was pertinent to start with this overview of this more complicated system than behavior trees and state machines before we dived into the full implementation. I'm still gonna be talking about GOPE in the context of Crash Congen's Unity GOPE system, which is licensed under the Apache 2.0 license, which is very permissive. But I think for this video, it doesn't really matter what system we're talking about. There are some nuances that are different between every system, but for the most part, all of these things are pretty much the same. And like I was saying earlier, GOPE is a little bit different from doing a behavior tree or a state machine. We start, instead of defining states and behaviors, we start by defining goals. Then we define actions that the AI could potentially take to reach those goals. We can assign costs to each of these actions, also preconditions and effects for what do these actions do. Then the AI comes up with a plan based on the world state or their memory that they get from the sensors. All of the words that I'm using right now and emphasizing a lot are keywords in the GOP system. They're like specific things that you need to know and that you create classes for. And we're gonna talk about every one of those in this video. When I'm working in a GOP system, I like to start with the end in mind. So I start with the goals and work my way backwards from what do we need to do to be able to get to those things. So we might start with an enemy AI has a goal of kill the player. But if you only have one goal, GOP is kind of pointless. You're probably better off using a state machine or maybe a behavior tree because the purpose of GOP is your AI can have several goals and it will plan out how do they get to different ones based on the available actions. So maybe your AI ends up with kill the player goal, wander goal, maybe they get hungry, so you'll give them an eat goal. At least three maybe gives us a good starting point. Once we have our goals set up, we can define our actions. What things can our AI do? In our example that we're talking about here, maybe our AI can do different forms of attacks, like they can melee. Since we're using a llama, maybe they can spit. I was using bounce and roll before, so maybe those would be available options as well. If they're wandering, they probably need a wander action. And if they can eat as a goal, probably they need an eat action. As you can see from this code, actions also have effects, conditions, and base costs. The GOP system will consider these when building a plan. So an action that has a higher base cost will get chosen less frequently when there are lower cost options that are available. The GOP system usually also considers the cost of traveling to achieve some action. Just because we have a low base cost, if something is very far away, we might not choose to do that, and we may choose to do a more expensive action instead if we don't have to travel very far. The effects tell the GOP system what effects an action has on the world state. For example, meleeing can make the player become dead which is a condition of success for having the kill player goal. Actions also have conditions because you may not want to do a ranged attack if you are too close to the player. We can add as many of these as we want. The actions I think are relatively straightforward on what are they doing They're What can your AI do? I get asked all the time, Chris, how do you know all this stuff? And a lot of it comes from experience using Unity and doing development in general, but I had a really great start in college. And that's where I'd like to talk to you about today's video sponsor. Southern New Hampshire University, or SNHU. SNHU provides low-cost, affordable game development and computer science degrees that can help you level up your game dev skills. Now, you may not know, I have a software engineering degree, and I feel like it's added a lot of value just going to college getting that degree helped me understand how does software work, how do things like state machines work, for example, and how do video games work which is why I'm partnering with SNHU to bring you information about how you can get a college degree from an accredited university with two accredited degree programs that I want to talk to you about today. One is a computer science degree, which is very similar to the software engineering degree that I have, and a game design and game development degree if you're more interested in specializing in game design and development. In that degree program, you'll learn things like what we talked about on this channel, about how to implement things with gameplay, AI, physics, all of these things that we talk about on this channel. You'll get structured lectures 
from university professors who have real world experience. You can get either of these degrees online through SNHU at a really affordable price. If you're interested in learning more about these degree programs, you can go to snhu.edu slash Academy, fill out the form there, and a real person will contact you to help you understand how these degree programs can specifically help you. Again, that's snhu.edu slash Academy. Go there, fill out the contact form, and someone will contact you with more information about the specific degree program that you're interested in. Once we know what we can do, I like to think of how do we get to those actions? So what do we know about in the world? This is the memory or the world state that your AI knows about in the GOAT system. So we can add all the different components. Like if we're hungry, we probably need to have a how hungry we are. We probably need to know where the player is. You can add as many things as you need here. But remember, as you scale up all the number of actions, all the different things in the memory, it makes the GOAT system go slower because we have more and more things to think about. If you're just getting started, don't worry too much about that. Don't pre-optimize, just put in what you think your AI needs to know. For example, maybe if the llama can have a spit attack, maybe they have a limited amount of spit and they need to do something to get more spit so they can keep spitting. Realism. So we know our goals, we know what we can do, and we know about the world, but we don't have a way to figure out how do we know these things about the world? And that's handled with something called sensors. If you've been watching AI series part 47 and 48, you've already seen these sensors. It's just maybe colliders so we can tell when something comes in range. Maybe we are pulling some mono behavior that's updating every frame. Whatever it is, the sensors are just a way to tell the GOP system, here's your current world state. This isn't a GOP specific concept. Basically, all AI needs to know how do I know about the world? And that's usually done with sensors. All of these are the core classes you need to use in implementing your AI using a GOAT system. How does your AI know which goal it should do? Well, that's where, depending on your GOAT system, it may change a little bit. So using this specific GOAT system, we have the concept of a brain. And I like this concept a lot. Some other systems maybe just check based on the sensors. They update the goals based on the available actions and create the plan automatically. I like a little bit of control over the AI. So I like the concept of the brain. The brain sets the goal based on maybe some events that are going on nearby. The brain can tell, oh, a player just came in range. Now we're sensing them. Let me set the goal to kill the player. The brain gives us a centralized place, kind of like our enemy class we've been watching 47, 48. It tells us, here's all the stuff about how do I set my goal? And you have different brains for different AI, or you can have a shared brain with different type arguments, which is what in the samples of Crash Congen's samples show us is they have a miner, a smith, a couple others. They all use basically the same brain and just have slightly different ways of setting the goals. And what we're going to go through the full implementation on, we're going to have one brain for the llama AI because we only have one AI. One maybe gotcha with having a brain is using the system, it's a little bit awkward to have your brain know about some state and have the GOP system know about another state, but you can have it where they're both referencing the same state. And we'll talk about how you can do that when we do the full implementation. Having a shared state that the GOP system uses and your brain uses reduces you from having to duplicate a bunch of effort. With the brain concept, we just define a clear set of rules of when we should change from one goal to another goal based on our world state or our memory and we can very easily see those rules in one area. Once we've set a new goal, the GOAT system says, okay, hey, let me reevaluate the plan to get that goal achieved based on the current world state. And finally, we have behaviors. And behaviors aren't anything super special. They're just mono behaviors that we use in conjunction with the rest of these classes we've already talked about. And these ones are a little bit tricky because you might be tempted to make maybe an action that's like melee action and then make a behavior melee behavior because you want access to the mono behavior stuff like start, update, whatever. But in most cases, you don't need a behavior with an action. The action should define what do you do. And the behavior is just for things like, let's use an example, if you want the llama to have hunger. The GOAT system doesn't trigger the hunger action. There's not really a hunger action, right? It's just something that happens every frame. Maybe you get more and more hungry every frame. That's something that just happens in the world. So you'd have a behavior for maybe hunger behavior that has a hunger float that increases over time unless the AI is eating. A melee action would do all of the things like look at the player, play the animation, whatever. 
and you don't need a melee behavior because it's all you're only doing the melee stuff when you're in the melee action. So these are basically just mono behaviors that influence maybe something that's going on in the world, whatever you need that will maybe influence how the agent behaves by updating something about their memory or some variable that they need to know about. Another example might be if you need an event to be raised whenever you have like on trigger enter, you need a behavior for that to catch that event, give it to the brain so then the brain knows oh, the player just entered in my sensor radius. I should maybe set my goal to kill the player. If you want to be really reactive, you need to do something like that. I hope this overview of the key components of a GOAT system help you better understand how do you design an AI using GOAT. Stay tuned for AI series part 50. 50. I can't believe there's already 50 episodes or about to be 50 episodes of the AI series. In that video, I'll show the full implementation of Alama AI, much like what we did in part 4748 using GOPE. But because what we did in 4748 are very straightforward, just kill the player and maybe wander type AI, we have a little bit extra nuance to this implementation to make it a little bit more fun. That one will be coming out in a couple weeks, so make sure that you've liked and subscribed to stay up to date whenever that one comes out. And if you wanted to support this channel, you can go to the affiliate links down in the description. That really helps a lot. There's no additional charge to you and it helps me a lot. We've got the Black Friday sales coming up on Unity Asset Store. I'm sure there's going to be some awesome Humble Bundles coming out as well. So before you do your shopping, if you can click on one of those, helps me out a ton. If you want to show your support directly, you can go to patreon.com slash Academy. You can click super thanks or join, become a YouTube member right here. You can get access to monthly topic polls, help drive the direction of the channel, and get an awesome shout out at the end of every video, like at the phenomenal tier. Andrew Bowen, at the Tremendous tier, Bruno Bozic, and at the Awesome tier, there's Ivan, Rulin, Ify Obelis, and Perry. There's also all of these great supporters as well. Thank you all for your support. I am so incredibly grateful.